I'm Dr. Diane Duckett, and welcome to another episode of Becoming You. This podcast is to help assist you in becoming a better successful you in life and in business. I am delighted to share with you today on just that. We know that becoming a better you takes work. In fact, it takes a lot of work, work that we sometimes really don't want to do ourselves. Today, I want to talk about get rid of doubt. Get rid of doubt. Well, hello everyone. I am Dr. Diane Duckett and welcome to another episode of Becoming You. Yes, we are going to be talking about get rid of doubt. We are getting rid of doubt today because doubt has no room or no place in our life, right? Because we want to be want to get everything that we need to succeed in life. And so today, we are going to get rid of doubt. We are definitely going to get rid of doubt. You know, have you ever been in you know, a place, you know, in your mind, you know, or maybe, uh, you know, having conversations with, you know, someone and, you know, doubt started, you know, just rising, you know, up in you because, you know, things was just not happening the way that you wanted to happen. Um, and the thing about it is that when we are becoming, when we are becoming ourselves, doubt will show up in our life. Doubt will definitely show up in our life, but we got to learn how to tap you know, uh, tap uh, doubt on the shoulder and tell doubt, guess what? You don't have room in here. You don't have room, you know, in here for me to even ponder on the doubt that I may be having. You see, doubt can keep us stuck. Doubt can keep us from moving in a direction that, you know, God wants us to move in. And we cannot become ourselves if we allow doubt to basically take over our lives, right? If we allow doubt to take over our lives, every way we turn, every, every which way we move, if we turn to the right, if we turn to the left, guess what? We don't want doubt to be on any either side because we want to be able to be confident, you know, be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, right? And so we got to be that confident that no matter what is happening in our life, no matter what situation is, you know, taking place, no matter what it is, guess what? We cannot allow doubt uh, to um, enter in or even doubt to even take over, you know, our um, emotions because doubt can literally have us uh, falling back and taking steps back, you know, lots of steps back, not two steps back, but lots of steps back um, because we allow doubt to enter into our space and we allow doubt to live there. How many of you are allowing doubt to live in your space? How many of you are allowing doubt to rule every function of your life? I mean, it's like ruling every area of your life, the way you move, the way you walk, the way you respond, you know, because you got all of this doubt, you know, that you have living in your space. And guess what? Doubt is loving that space, right? Because doubt is saying, you know what, girl, I know you're not getting up off that couch. Girl, I know you're not leaving out that house Um, because doubt is allowing, you allowing doubt to live there. And so doubt is going to sit there and taunt you and torture you and do all the other things to you so that you won't move and so that you won't become. And so today we got to be able to, you know, get rid of doubt. And so how do we get rid of doubt? How do we get rid of doubt? Well, first of all, to get rid of doubt, we got to understand that what we think you know, we become, right? What we think we become. And uh, if we're thinking, you know, that we're not going to be nobody, if we're thinking that, you know, we're not going to, you know, amount to nothing, if we're thinking all of these things about ourselves, guess what? That is true. It is going to be true for you because you're allowing doubt to live in your space, meaning your space, your, your overall space, living in your mind, living in your heart, living in your body, living in your soul. You're allowing doubt to live in your space. And so we got to be able to change, you know, what we think about ourselves. You know, we can't be sitting up here criticizing ourselves and, 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 and being down on ourselves um, because there's a lot in us that, you know, God wants to do, you know, in us. But we got to, you know, we got to work out some things. We got to do the work to be able to be fully show up for the task and the assignment and the destiny and the purpose that God has for us. And so whatever doubt 
you know, that may be living in your space. All right, you got to tell doubt now. You got to go pack your bags because, you know, you got too much stuff over here. You got too much drunk, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the trunk, right? You got you to gotta pack your bags and go because you can't live here anymore. We got to let you go. And, and for real, you got to be able to let doubt go because doubt is going to hold you back. And so one of the things is, like I said, you got to change the way you think about yourself because whatever it is that you're thinking about yourself is what is going to become your reality. You know, it's going to become your reality and you're going to wonder why, you know, why you're not, you know, um, any further than where you are today um, because you allow doubt to live in your space. And so another thing uh, for us to, uh, you know, get rid of uh, doubt and not allow doubt to live in our space, we got to clean the clutter. We got to clean the clutter around our space, right? Because when there is clutter, meaning people that don't belong in your space, people who just cluttering up your space, people who just don't, you know, it's not for you, you know, people who just want you stuck where you at, right? You got to be able to clean out the clutter because when you don't clean out the clutter, that clutter is, is allowing doubt to even live in your space even the more, right? Because you aren't cleaning out the clutter. And so if there's people in your life that is not benefiting you, if there's people in your life that's always, you know, tearing you down, you know, always, you know, uh, pushing you away and stuff like that, guess what? Now it's time for you to get rid of that clutter, right? It's time for you to let it go so that you can be able to move forward in the uh, promises and the destiny that God, you know, has for you. We cannot allow doubt to live in our space any longer. As a matter of fact, during in this season, in this season, there should be no doubt in your space whatsoever. Um, because in this season, I believe that God wants you to understand who you are becoming, wants you to understand your assignment, wants you to understand all the plans and purposes that he has for your life, right? And so we cannot allow uh, doubt to sit there and live in our space forever because if we allow doubt to sit there and live in our space forever, guess what? Doubt, when we, like, if we decide to go go on to be with the Lord, right, doubt going to go with us, right, because we allow doubt to sit there and uh, live in our space, and we knew better. We knew better than to allow doubt to be, you know, our company. How many of you got the company of doubt? You got, you got... The company of doubt is literally sitting down by your side, sitting side by side, you know, on the couch or whatever, and doubt is just having this conversation with you, right? It's just totally having a conversation with you. And guess what? And you're responding to the doubt. You're literally having, you're, you're going back and forth with the doubt, you know, because doubt, you know, whatever the doubt is telling you, you're, you're accepting it as true, right? And so you got to be able to, you know, tell doubt, you know what? You cannot sit on this couch with me anymore. You cannot live in my space anymore because guess what I am going to be all that God has called me to be I am going to become me I am going to become all that he has created me to be in doubt you can no longer live in my space matter of fact you can no longer sit beside me because guess what you are no no longer welcome in my space and so therefore we got to be able to change our mindset about us you know about who we are and what we are becoming because who we are and what we are becoming is 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 greatness right is 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 greatness and god really wants to let us out of the box some of you are in a box like you you literally open a box and you're still sitting in the box because you allow doubt to live with you. You allow doubt to sit with you, right? So God wants to take you out of that box so that you can live, so that you can experience all that God has for you. And so we can't allow doubt to live in our space because doubt is just not welcome in our space, right? And so then once you begin to, you know, uh, do the work on uh, really affirming yourself, uh, really taking doubt, you know, and and throwing it out, like kick, get, like yeah, yeah, get get it and kick it, up, kick it out, just kick, just kick it out, because doubt cannot live with you. And so when you allow those things to happen, when you begin to do those things to happen, your life is now going to begin to change. It's going to begin to shift. 
Um, because, you know, doubt is no longer living with you and doubt is no longer sitting there with you. And so when doubt is no longer sitting there with you or living with you, guess what? You're going to be able to think clearly now. Like you're going to be able to think clear on the things that God, you know, um, wants to do in your life. And you're going to be able to move and operate in obedience because doubt is no longer there, right? You're now going to be moving in a faith step, right? You're going to be moving faith by faith by faith by faith because that's how God wants you to move. He God wants you to move. Every time he tells you to move, he wants you to move. Every time he tells you to do something, he wants you to do something. And so that's that's why we can't allow doubt to be in our space living with us like, you know, like it, like it owns us, right? Cuz doubt does not own us. And sometimes people we think doubt owns, owns us, or oh, doubt says he owns us. He or she says he owns us, right? And we cannot allow doubt to uh, own us in that uh, magnitude because there is so much more uh, in us, and we need to become. We need to become who God has destined for us to come. And so you have to get rid of that thought pattern that you have even of yourself, that thought pattern of things that did not um, work out for you, that thought pattern uh, that you missed, maybe missed the opportunity that you thought maybe it was for you or whatever. No, you got to get rid of that doubt because that's the stuff that will say, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I'm not, you know, worthy. Oh, you know, they don't like me. Oh, they don't want me in that space. You're like, you're going to be, that's doubt. That right there is doubt. And doubt is living in your space and having you to continue to say these things about you when those things are not true. And so you got to, you know, do the work to allow your mind to be set free. Um, Because right now, when doubt lives with you, you're living in a prison. You're living in a prison of the mind um, because the mind is controlling the the doubt that is within your mind. And you got to allow that doubt to be released and let it go because God wants to do some amazing things in your life. He wants to do some amazing things that, you know, that's going to amaze even you, right? But you got to get rid of doubt. You got to think highly of yourself, more highly of yourself than what others may think of you because there is destiny, there is purpose uh, in you. There is purpose in you, and you got to be able to get rid of that doubt so that doubt won't have you chained up, shackled up, and locked up, right? So you got to get rid of that doubt so that you can move forward in the plans that God has for you. I know that, you know, some people, you know, may say, well, you know, even though I'm doubting, I'm still thriving or whatever, but you're not thriving as you should, right? You're not thriving like God wants you to thrive um, because you have that little doubt resonating in there. See, a lot of people don't have a lot of doubt going on in their mind, but they may got like a little, little, just a little bit of doubt going on in their mind, right? But then you have some that's like doubt just like literally overpowers them because they allow doubt to truly live with them. When they go to sleep, doubt is, doubt is going to sleep with them. When they take a shower, doubt is taking a shower with them. When they brush their teeth, Doubt is brushing uh, its teeth with them. Like doubt is just living in their space. And that's one thing that we can't allow. We can't allow doubt to uh, live in the space that God is trying to release us from. And so we got to be able to clear the mind. We got to be able to have like a wusa moment. Like, you know, wusa. you got to be able to have a wusa moment because the wusa moment, you know, is helping you to have a mindful moment to say, hey, what doubt? You know what? These things that you allow me to say about myself is not even true. I am good enough. I am worthy. I I I know that because I may not be sitting at that table, God has a better table for me. See, these are the things that you got to speak about yourself so that doubt can no longer live in your space. And you know me, I'll, I'm always talking about affirmations, you know, so... Whenever doubt is there, you got to bring forth an affirmation. Yes, you do. You got to bring forth some type of affirmation to get you out of that doubt and space, right? Because doubt can no longer live in your space. And so whatever that affirmation may be, you got to allow that affirmation to be be, be for you. Like you got to believe in that affirmation. Like don't just say the affirmation and you don't believe in the affirmation. No, say the affirmation and believe what you say about yourself. And so if you're going to say, I am good enough, guess what? Believe that you are good enough. Don't allow doubt to come back in and say that you're not good enough because guess what? You just affirm to your own self 
that you are good enough. And so trust that when you say and speak those words over your life, guess what? It is true for yourself. Because like I said, whatever you think about yourself is what's going to become true. Whatever you think about yourself is what's going to become true. And so we got to learn how to speak life back into existence for ourselves. Um, Because when we don't do that, you know, we hold ourselves up. We can't do what we need to do because we're not speaking life into ourselves. So you got to be able to speak life into yourself, back into yourself, so that you can thrive in this thing, what we call life, right? You got to be able to thrive in with this, this thing that we call life so that you can get all that God has for you. And so you got to be able to speak those affirmations into existence for yourself. You can't, you know, just like I said, say, you know, speak a thing and not believe it. Believe what you say because you are what you speak. You are what you speak. And so won't you begin to speak positive uh, positive words uh, to yourself so th- th- those positive words can become you, right? And so that's one of the things, that's how we're going to be able to get rid of doubt because like I said, we cannot be walking and operating in doubt in this season because we have too much to do. We have too much that God wants us to do and God truly wants us to understand who we are on the inside and who we are on the outside. So you can't be one way when you in a, when you in a house and then you another way when you leave the house. No, you got to be the same way all the time because that's the character that God wants to show up. That's you. That's the you, the authentic you that God wants to show up. And another thing too is that when you are to get rid of doubt, guess what? You got to check your heart. You got to check where your heart is. So if your heart is not there, what does it say? Where your treasure treasure is, there is where your heart is. Or where your heart is, there is where your treasure is, right? So you got to check your heart because your heart sometimes will stir you in the wrong direction, you know, because of what doubt is speaking uh, to you. So doubt may, you know, uh, say, uh, no, you know, you don't need to be going over there. You know, that's not for you. Won't you go hang out over here? Won't you go do this or do that? And you'll follow the voice of doubt versus following the voice of God for your life. And that's uh, that's because it may be a heart thing. It may be, you know, what, what your heart is saying about even you and those around you. Your heart speaks a lot. Your heart speaks a lot to you, right? And so your heart, you know, because our heart is like amazing. Our heart is truly amazing because we can feel, you know, uh, when our heart is like not right. When our heart is not right. Our heart, when it's not right, we can become sad. We can become depressed. We can become angry. We can become happy. We can be laughing. We can be crying. We can be doing a whole lot of stuff because of our heart. And what our heart does is our heart produces emotions, emotions that, you know, we uh, have that, you know, uh, may stem from joy, may stem from traumatic events, may stem from sadness, whatever it may stem from. But our heart um, produces our emotions, right? So whatever our heart is feeling, that's how we're sometimes going to show up. We're sometimes going to show up the way we feel in our heart. And so if we don't feel like we're being loved, right, but that's, that's, what, that's how we're going to show up, y'all. That, that's how we're going to show up. We're going to show up like we don't feel like we're being loved, right? If, you know, um, someone, you know, got a promotion over over you, right, you're going to show up at that job because it's a hard thing now because you mad. You mad because somebody got a promotion and you didn't get that promotion. So you're going to show up and you're going to do the bare minimum because you you, you you mad. you mad. you like, why did that person get the, you know, promotion over me? And I've been doing all the work. Like, I've been busting my tail doing all the work. And this person next to me just sits there and talks on the phone and on social media every single day, all day long, and they get the promotion. Okay, I'm going to show up up and I'm going to just do the bare minimum, right? So that's that's the heart talking because the heart controls our emotions. The heart controls how we respond to certain things. And so, yeah, we got to check the heart because our heart determines a whole lot of uh, things that we do um, in our life. And so when you uh, are having this doubt, even about yourself or about yourself, you got to check your heart. You got to check why do you have this doubt in the first place? Sometimes people will have you doubting. Sometimes people will have you doubting to the point where, you know, you be, you, you will start believing what these people are saying about you, right? So you got to uh, get to the point where, you know, you got to check the heart. Who's around you that's like bringing all this negativity around you? 
or making you doubt, you know, the way that you're doubting, you got to go and check that out so that you can go handle it, fix it, get rid of it, do whatever you got to do. So those doubts won't be, you know, entwined in you and those doubts won't be living in your space in your space. So we got to check the heart, you know, uh, because if we don't check the heart, guess what? That heart is going to steer us in some directions that you may not want to go. You may not want to travel down the road that your heart, you know, may want to, uh, want you to travel down because of which, what you are experiencing or what, you know, has come your way or what has not been working for you. You got to be able to check your heart so that your heart is right. And therefore, when you go to make decisions, guess what? Those decisions are going to be decisions that are going to be right for you. So you're not going to be uh, making decisions on how you feel. You know, because a lot of people make decisions on how they feel because of the doubts that they have about themselves. So you got to go check the heart. You know, go ask the Lord, is my heart right? And if your heart is not right, go fix it because your heart got to be fixed. Your heart got to be fixed. Go fix your heart. Go fix your heart because your heart has to be fixed to in order for God to really get what he needs to get out of you in this season. God wants to do some amazing things, as I said, in this season with you, but he can't because your heart not right. Your heart is just not right. And so you got to go get your heart right. You know, people wondering why things are just not happening or working out, you know, working out for them. It's because of your heart. You know, it's because of your heart. You know, uh, your heart is telling you, you know, certain things, certain things. And you got to be able to recognize that, you know, if you if you don't have a healthy heart, if you don't have a heart that's uh, pleasing, a heart that's you know uh, going a heart for God, guess what? If it ain't got if you ain't got that kind of heart, you need to you know go and fix it because God wants you to fix your heart so that your heart can be right. So every time you know He gives you something to do or gives you a task to do, your heart is going to be fully in it. And so God loves you so much that, you know, he wants the best for you. And so we got to be able to allow ourselves to do the work that we need to do so that we can thrive um, in who we are becoming. We need to thrive in who we are becoming. And so, like I said, you got to think about Get rid of the way that you think about yourself, right? First, you got to get rid of the way that you think about yourself. And then you got to go check the heart. You got to go check your heart so that you can get that, get your heart cleared, cleared out. You know, people who have heart problems really have heart problems. They got to go get some, like, sometimes they got to get pacemakers or whatever, um, uh, in that, you know, to help them with their heart um, beats and stuff like that. Um, and it's because something happened, right? Something happened. Uh, where the heart may have stopped, the, you know, the beats of the heart may have stopped or whatever. And so now they're, ha they're having a problem. They have an issue where this issue has now turned into a, a really big issue where they have to now go into surgery and get, you know, the the heart, um, the, the pacemaker, or whatever you call that thing that they put in the heart to replace the heart. Like it's a fake heart. It's a fake heart. Do you have a fake heart? It's a fake heart. Heart is not a real heart. It's just a machine for these for people who have pacemaker. It's just a machine helping you to stay alive, right? It's helping you to stay alive. And so, if your heart is not right, guess what? You 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 almost on the same level as them. You know, you got got a fake heart, and your heart is not beating the way that it needs to beat because you're allowing doubt to live in your space. And so you got to get rid of doubt because doubt has no room in this season. Doubt has no room in this season because we have to become, we have to become us. We have to become who God has created us to be, right? And so whatever we have to do to get the work done, to, to understand, you know, the, uh, the uh, magnitude of God's plan for our life, we got to get there, people. We got to get there because God needs us to show up. He needs us to show up fully. He needs us to show up fully in what he has created us to be, right, and created us to do. And so we got to get rid of doubt. That's like almost like when you're doubting, you, sometimes we talk about fear, too, because fear, fear sometimes get in our way. 
fear sometimes, you know, keep us from going forward as well. And so fear and doubt, just, just, they just don't mix together. Because matter of fact, fear and doubt, they have parties together. They Fear and doubt, they will have a party together. So if one will bounce off the other, you know, fear say something, then doubt will laugh. And then doubt will say something, then fear will laugh. And then they just be having a good old party because they know that, you know, if they can get the fear and doubt can get you to the point of not moving, not moving forward and not working on you and not understanding who you are becoming, guess what? You're always going to be in the same position. You're always going to be sitting wondering, why am I not moving any farther than what I am? And that's because you allowed the fear and you allowed the doubt to take over your life. Matter of fact, yeah. Our doubt was already living with you right now. You let, let now you letting fear move in with you. So you cannot let fear or doubt move in and live with you uh, because there are some great things that God wants to do in your life. And so if that's you, if you are that person who is going through the struggle of wanting to understand who God has, you know, who God is creating you to be and who God is creating you to become, you got to be able to work on. Uh, how you think about yourself and work on your heart because those are the things that's going to help push you, propel you forward into your next, into the next uh, dimension of what God has for you. And so you got to be able to do the work, do the work so that you can show up for God and God can show up for you. And so if doubt is hanging around you, if fear is hanging around you, guess what? Pack fear's bag up. Pack doubts bag up and tell them they got to go. Matter of fact, you go walk the doubt and you go walk fear to the door and tell them goodbye, have a nice day, because you're no longer welcome in, in, in here anymore, right? And if they come around and start knocking on the door, if they knock on the door, don't open it because they do not belong in your space, in your living space, in your living space. So guess what? You got to get rid of it. It's time for you to get rid of fear. It's time for you to get rid of doubt because guess what? Doubt has no room in your space. I'm Dr. Diane Duckett and thank you for listening to another episode of Becoming You.